Bokeh. If you've been shooting photos for a while now, then you're probably familiar with this term. It's more popular than one of Kim Kardashian's homemade videos. But what is it exactly and how do you do Bokeh? Bokeh is a Japanese word that is now used to refer to those out of focus bits in the image. Well first, I wanted to talk to some of the photography people in Japan about the word and its origins and discuss how one should do Bokeh. Hello, live from Tokyo. Konnichiwa. <laughs> Konnichiwa. Um, so, I want to ask you, what is bokeh? Bokeh is... Bokeh actually means blur. It can actually mean an image that's blur, or you can say that a person's not thinking right. So now we've got Bellamy Hunt from Hi. Tokyo. Live from Tokyo. Hey, what's up, guys? Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> anyway, I want to ask you about um, bokeh. Well, yeah, any lens really can produce what you could call bokeh, but certain lenses have an ability to produce background Jesus. that yeah. everybody wants and everybody gets so flustered and excited about. <laughs> so, for you, what makes a good picture with bokeh in it? Good bokeh, I think it's a nice contrast, like. Things that's supposed to be sharp has to be really sharp, and things that's blur has to be really blur. Yeah. Do you think some people get too carried away with bokeh? They're like, yeah, yeah I I'm think, gonna have bokeh. I think a lot of people get. Yeah. Uh, for example, I saw this photo because I was picking for a Getty image. Some Japanese guy, I think he went to Paris and he took a picture of his girlfriend. He wants to use a big uh, aperture and have like a really nice bokeh of the of his girlfriend and the Eiffel Tower, but you get what I mean, the Eiffel yeah. Tower's all blurred Blood. out. And she's, <laughs> she's like, oh, so glamorous. And you have this weird triangular shape blurred out in the back. It looks like a giant cock. Yeah, uh, well, uh, that, that, that was why, why it was made, but... Yeah. Just putting something out of focus is not a good photograph. That's an excuse, okay? Don't just out of focus a cup and then say, oh, it's bokeh and it's amazing. And it's, if it's used correctly and if it's used properly, it's a wonderful effect. And I know a great many photographers, particularly portrait photographers, who use it masterfully. Yeah. Okay, let's get ready to go. Now, because I don't know my way around Hong Kong, uh, I need a guide dog or locations. I've got locations. Uh, unfortunately, a Lambie's on leave on holiday. Probably buy more clothes, more coats and makeup and stuff. So, she's left me this. That smiley face. Here we go. So, we went out to shoot and elaborate more about how one can do bokeh by shooting with an incredibly incredible lens. Something's not right here. This surely can't be the location at a Lambie pick. This is a dive. Uh, Lock, Lock's enjoying it now, he's got his, he's got his food. Uh. So anyway, what, what I was saying before is that you have to think about the background, you have to pick a nice background, even though it's blurred it will still be visible in the shot. Anyway, I've got f0.95 lens Noctilux. So let's see what I can do. Now, I have to explain the camera is, this is a film camera. You, you remember film? You know what film is, don't you? Now I've got this because our Leica M9 is uh, in pieces at the minute. It's undergoing a bit of uh, maintenance. So uh, I'm using my M2. Trusty M2 is uh, very rudimentary. You set your aperture here, and then the shutter speed, and then you wait until it's got a little green dot there, and then you have to set it here and here. So it's quite a lengthy process. But actually, one good thing is that we have got our translator today. Uh, unfortunately, she doesn't speak English or Chinese. She speaks Japanese and Korean, so hopefully this goes well. This is you. Hi. So, uh, what is bokeh? Eh, bokeh. I can't even say that. Hmm. Yeah. Good point. 
suppose, I suppose we should start taking photos and take pictures of our translator. There you go. Some lights in the background. Got some bulky balls. Shooting with the Noctilux F0.95 is quite challenging at close distances and with an off-center subject. Just breathing too heavily can put your subject off focus. At a distance of one meter, you get less than two centimeters of stuff in focus. Still, I wanted to shoot this aperture just to do this bulkier thing extremely. Yeah, you see, with this kind of location, it's really hard to get a nice background bulk here. Oh, what's the matter with Lambi? You know, I, I think there must be a nice location around here. Let's go hunt around for a better location than this. Then we looked around at the other locations that Lambi picked. Smell of food after it's been recycled. Oh, this, this will do. Shooting at f0.95 can throw the background crazily out of focus, as if someone's just slipped some acid into your breakfast tea. I suppose that's better than nothing. All right, lovely. So with that, I can get a decent exposure. Okay. Well, this proved to be incredibly handy. Uh, everybody seems to steal Locke's ND filter. It's bloody useful, especially when you want to shoot at f0.95, which I did want to. Blow all the crapness out which means stopping the exposure down. And the maximum shutter speed on this is one one thousandth of a second, which is ridiculously slow by modern standards. But after seeing our next location, I was starting to think that Lambi had lost the plot. One X short of a 4X lager. So I decided to go where I wanted to go. Okay, so we've ditched away a Lambi's instructions for where to go, and we've decided to go where I want to go. Central. Let's go get some bulker! Now it's still quite bright and I want to use it at 0 0.95 so I'm still using this. It's quite hard to focus though so I'm just gonna keep the focus locked in one position and then just walk in and out. I have to say that this F0.95 is phenomenal but you really need a firm grip on it. It doesn't help when you're holding a bloody ND filter on the front. The light keeps changing. Okay. I think it's just as important to pick a nice background, even if you're blowing it out, as when you're gonna shoot at f5.6, f8, and everything's in focus. You know, it's quite clear what good bork here is. Well, not even that clear. I mean, people can say that good bork here is actually bad bork here. The thing is, how do you integrate all those blurry bits? Make a good shot. It's obviously good bork here. It's all about the lens design. But having a good photo with bork here in it, that works. It's all about composing and framing and stuff. Bork here is great, although sometimes it's all too easy to let it become the picture itself. It works well as a kind of icing on the cake, to decorate the subject, to draw focus into the subject. Doctor. But that wasn't based on a real person. Sometimes bokeh can be really distracting though. It doesn't even have to be awful looking bokeh. It can be a bit in your face at times. I think when you have a, a good shot with bokeh in it, the bokeh can't be all of the picture itself. I think sometimes it's quite easy to just get carried away and think, oh yeah, lots of bulk here. Bulk here, whore. But you have to think of it as just an element of the photo. Forcing myself to shoot at f0.95 made me think about some of the shots that didn't look so good because of the shallow depth of field. Mainly because of the off focus thing and also just missing things. At the end of the day, no matter how cool bulk here is, it should be more about making that photo itself rather than the bulk here itself. 
otherwise there's no photo. So if you want to do bulkier shots well, consider your background and think about how it will look when blurred. And don't compromise the subject in favour of bulkier. If you blur the face of your subject and portrait, then it can look weird. Personally, on the streets, more depth of field is better for me, more practical, and I prefer look. So that's bokeh. Don't pay too much attention to it. Don't be a bokeh whore. Actually, what am I saying? Do be a bokeh whore. I'm one. Well, that didn't go too well, did it? What's, uh, what's she playing at? Central? Pete said, well, we went central just now. What, why does she have to? Oh, never mind. Yeah. Subscribe.